We'll call the roll of, we'll call the 14th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. So would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rinflesh? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Warner? Here. 15 present. Corms present. Alderman Warren. I thank your honor. Move the minutes of the last common council meeting be approved and at the same stand as entered on the record. It's been moved and seconded that minutes of the past council meeting stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance this evening we have Troop 804 from First Congregational Church. Scouts, would you come up to the front please and lead us in a pledge? allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Okay, we have one notice this evening on the agenda, and that will be held over, so we'll hold that for now. We have one hearing this evening, and that's to amend the zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 2218 Jewelson Court. Any interested persons wishing to be heard? Any interested persons wishing to be heard? If you'd like to be heard, please step up to the microphone and give us your name and address, please. Alderman Orr. I thank you, Honor. Move the hearings be closed. Second. We have a motion to second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mayor's appointments. <clears throat> this is dated to the state. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Fran Berg to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's Special International Committee to fill the unexpired term of Jane Wong Kautzer, whose term expires 43005, signed by the Mayor. That will lie over. <clears throat> Sue, public forum. Uh, yes, first is John Berner. Would you please step up to the mic? Mr. Berner, can you give me your home address, please, and city and state? Oh, pardon. 1919 Broadway. 1919 Broadway? Yes. Sheboygan, Wisconsin? Yes. Okay, thank you. You have five minutes, please. Pardon? You have five minutes. Okay, if I run over, I don't want extra time, just tell me to stop. <laughs> okay, I wrote down some notes, and this is on uh, 14th Street Park. And we have people here trying to save the park. We had dealing, no buildings on it. You could sit there, watch the water, trees larger than what's on 14th Street, all gone. Now you see rocks, a marina, cyclone fence, nothing, you can't even see out of there anymore. Didn't see you people there. 14th Street is the central location for a police station. I don't like to see a park go, but I'd like to see a park, if it is going, to re be remembered with the police station. You have people coming up here and said, in one month we got 3,000 names and they multiplied it by this. I watched the rest of the Common Council last week. 
and i think you worked on this longer than a month you have during the common council meeting when you revote it when you revote it on it you had one common council meeting saying she he or she voted against it because then you could sell other parks but i heard the alderman explain you can't sell parks the city is not selling a park it's utilizing a park we had another common council member that said it'll only cost us a dollar more. That wouldn't even pay the interest on the overrun if you went to 23rd Street. And uh, that's all I got to say about 14th Street. On the city and its budget, I know you're working hard on it. I think the city is going to have to do a little restructuring and see about combining things. And I was watching the meeting that where the person had spoke before the common council meeting. I was that today, tonight, then somebody would spoke? Correct. Right? And I listened to him say that unions are gonna have to give concessions. Okay. But what about management? What about the people on the top? They must have a contract. I know they have a pay freeze right now, right? But that isn't a giveaway. I mean, that's not taking something. That's something they've never gotten. So you're not really taking something away from them. I mean, if you want lower people to take cuts, the top people got to take cuts too. Our, and this gentleman before, if I get a little interwound here because I, I listened to him saying that the sheriff's department should come, you know, if the police need help that because it's what we pay the county, that the county sheriff's department should help in some way with intertwining them. You have detectives on the police, op, uh, police force and you have police officers. The detectives go out and try and try to find and bring a case against the drug houses. Your police officer are doing another job. And when you cut one, you're taking away from another. And I can't see it. I, I think that would be the last thing to do is, is hurt the police because you're hurting the citizens. And to sit there and say, I heard the gentleman say that fees for nonprofit organizations, in a certain respect, I agree, but you have churches which count on the people who already pay a fee. Now they're going to have to pay another fee to help the church. That's like double taxation. It is. The churches get their money from the people. Broad prize and bingo. City, broad prize and bingo. Extra money, right? That's all I got to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tom Gessler? Tom Gessler? He overslept. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is Gina Steinhardt. Gina? <clears throat> No, that's okay. Gina, can you give me your home address with city and state also, please? Sure. 1311 Maryland Avenue. Okay. Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Thank you. And you will have five minutes. Okay. I'm here today for two reasons. Number one, to thank the Common Council for their efforts on tackling the traffic problems on Maryland Avenue. Particularly, I would like to thank Silas Vanderwill for all of his help in our neighborhood, even though it isn't his, he isn't our assigned alderman. I've been working on problems in our neighborhood for about two years now. Um, st uh, starting with the addition of the four-way stop signs and crosswalks at 13th and Maryland. I had emailed Juan Perez originally in 2002. He forwarded those emails to the Common Council and the improvements began slowly but surely. We've also managed to get stop signs added to the northeast and southeast corners of Sheridan Park, limited parking signs installed on 13th Street and Maryland Avenue, and now the newest changes with a one-way street and no truck signs that Silas has implemented. My neighbors and I appreciate all that the council has done 
for us, especially Silas, who's made his, himself available when others would not. My second reason is that I've been in touch with many neighbors since all of these improvements have begun. I walked around and asked their opinions on the police station and on the park in general. Very few of these neighbors have seen anyone else but me concerning these issues, and we all think that if anybody should have any say in deciding the park's fate, it should be the neighbors rather than about 5% of the entire city of Sheboygan. I realize that about over 3,000 people have signed a petition and that their opinions are very important, but my neighbors feel that their opinions have been lost in the media blitz and political controversy of it all. I've been asked by about 15 homeowners on Maryland Avenue, 13th Street, and Illinois Avenue to speak for them. There has been much misinformation floating around, including expansion plans, demolition of the entire park, parking problems, street closures, all sorts of things. I think the best way to handle this situation would be to publicize the actual plans for the police station, including the location of the building, the underground parking plan, the future expansion plans, plans to handle any water or sewer problems arising from the new building, that kind of thing. If there is no actual blueprint at this time, even a rough outline of what would be planned would be extremely helpful in stopping rumors from being accepted as facts. The council has also mentioned that there will be an area for a new park, but not specifically about where it actually will be located and what will be there. Since only a few of the members of the Common Council have been able to check out the north, south, and especially the east sides of the park, I've brought some pictures to show all of you some of the major concerns about these borders. Sure. These pictures are mainly the wooded area that is just across 13th Street on the east side of the park. Most of them show what is visible from the sidewalk and where many children end up playing when bored of the limited amount of play equipment at Sheridan Park. To begin with, the sidewalks themselves are in very bad repair and often have glass littered all over, which makes it unsafe for everyone in the neighborhood, especially the children. Right off the sidewalks, trails into the wooded area are obviously used a lot as they are not just visible, but they're trampled down considerably by those using them. They are being used by the children as evidenced by the toys, forts, and miscellaneous items strewn about along with the garbage and pallets scattered throughout the wooded area. Even though it is clearly marked by private property signs, which also say no skateboards, bicycles, dogs, loitering, or dumping, it is obvious that these signs don't stop those who use this area. Some neighbors have even reported seeing old mattresses there in the past. These also might be some of the areas where the drug dealing is occurring. Would you want your children playing in there? Besides the traffic concerns on the east and especially the west side of the park due to the high volume of traffic on 14th Street, another picture um, on that board's shows the neighbors on the north side trying to deal with the drug dealers. Neighbors Against Drugs has been pretty successful on that side over the last year, bringing the drug houses down from 15 to 2, according to Todd Preby. Many neighbors of mine know exactly where the drug houses are on our end of the park and are anxiously waiting the day when NAD helps us begin the battle on our side. I have police rec records here that show exactly what crimes have been occurring on the streets bordering the park. To summarize this report, from the years 2000 to 2004, 19 drug-related crimes, 18 thefts, four burglaries, three weapon violations, and 29 property damage reports were made. Concerning the drug charges, the trend has shown a marked increase from 2002 to the present. This year alone, the weapons Excuse violations- me, your five minutes are up. Oh. Okay, um, I just wanted to say that the safety is the main issue here and my neighbors and I are in favor of the police department due to the condition of the area. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Before we get into the consent agenda, I have something I would like just like to read to you briefly, so bear with me for about two minutes here. Good evening, everyone. As all of us realize, the rising cost of providing health insurance continues to be a struggle for all our, for all our, our employers, both in public and private sector. 
The City of Sheboygan is no different, and once again this year, the cost of health insurance places a strain on our budgetary priorities. Two weeks ago, I presented a budget to all of you for review, and since then, it has been making its way through the budget process. A long-term approach to lowering the cost of health insurance is needed, and thus far, no one has found a silver bullet. However, we do have a group that is meeting regularly to explore all options and reduce the cost of health insurance to the city, its taxpayers, and employees. Much attention needs to be focused on how we deliver insurance to our employees. I would expect also that events on the state and federal level would affect our decisions and course of action. I do believe, however, we must take action in the short term to alleviate the impact of health insurance on our city budget. Thus, I am proposing an increase in an employee contribution towards health insurance premium for all city employees. With council approval, this can take place <coughs> January 1st, 2005 for non-represented employees. And I am directing Ed Zurich, our human resource director, to also negotiate this as part of our current union collective bargaining. There are additional changes in deductibles and co-pays that can save substantial dollars, which I also would like to see negotiated. Again, I emphasize the importance of long-term solutions regarding the distribution of health insurance costs for all our city employees. However, as recipients of this benefit, we must share in reducing this burden on the city taxpayers in our budget. Ed Zurich has informed me on an upcoming presentation on November 4th at Mee Public Library, and it was, he just told me it was referred at two o'clock rather than three, he, anyone wishing to attend be there at two o'clock rather than three, and a presentation will be made by Dave Newby. The topic of this presentation will be health insurance and concepts of providing it more cost effectively. Second, as part of our city's budget process, I am proposing using an additional 100,000 of city reserves to offset the tax levy outlined in my proposal two weeks ago. This amount will not adversely affect our city's bond rating, yet it will provide relief to our city taxpayers. Through ongoing discussions and reviews of city operations, I look forward to the acceptance of a budget that is responsible and reasonable in the upcoming weeks. Thank you. With that consent agenda, Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. We have a motion to second before us. All ROs be accepted and filed, RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and ordinances be put upon this passages. And that's from 14.1 through 14.23, but minus 14, 17, 18, 19, and 20, those have to be referred to finance. Got that? 17, 18, 19, and 20, those have to go to finance. Alderman Van Eckert. Your Honor, I'd like to pull 14.23. Go ahead. I just to uh, yep. abstain on it, but it's all right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other discussion, you want to call the roll, please? For the consent. Yeah, you, for the consent. Alderman, you want a sep separate vote on 1423, you said? Right. Let's do 1423 first. Okay. Okay, this is on 1423. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Bonet, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. Peterson, Rinflesh, Sagali, Stefan, Van Akron, Vanderweel, and Warner. 14, one, 14 eyes, one abstention. Okay, on the rest of it. Is there any other discussion on the rest of it? Okay, please do. Berg, Bonet. Serta, Graf, Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. Peterson, Rinflesh, Sagali, Stefan, 
Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1424 through 1430 to be referred. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to point out that 1428 should go to finance too. I don't know if that was noted. Yeah, I do have it on there. Thank you. Yep. Then we'll go to public protection and finance on 1428. Fourteen thirty-one through thirty-seven to be referred. Fourteen thirty-eight and thirty-nine has been withdrawn. Fourteen forty and forty-one lie over. Fourteen forty-two to be referred. Fourteen forty-three by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license sixty-five fifty-two and sixty-five seventy-one based on failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. We have a motion and a second before it's under discussion. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, is a Stacy M. Ross license number sixty-five fifty-two present? Stacy M. Ross. Is a Sarah Seitz, license 6571 present? Sarah Seitz? The honor they are not present. Okay. Where do we have a motion and a second before us. Is there <coughs> any other discussion on a motion? Not going to call the roll, please. Boney? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez, Aye. Peterson, Aye. Rinflesh, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and Berg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1444 by law and licensing regarding a scheduled quasi judiciary hearing to determine whether the Class A fermented malt beverage license and cigarette license 2261. Held by Seoul should be sus correct. Yes. Should Mr. be Sohan. suspended or revoked based on the facts and findings. Recommends revocation of the license. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, make a motion to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Second, second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Is a uh, Santa Sohal here? Would you like to speak to the Common Council? Yes, sir. Would you like to speak to me? Do you need a motion to open the floor for his yeah. attorney? So moved. Okay. So we have a motion before us and a second to open the floor for attorney under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, Mr. Sohal had retained me in this endeavor, and I had the chance to address the committee last week in regard to the license that we're talking about here in this uh, 1444. And some of the things that I brought up last week, I'd like to reiterate tonight that uh, Mr. Sohal uh, has invested thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars into this gas station that he currently operates. He has served thousands and thousands of people. He's owned this gas station for a period of about a year and a half. And in this year and a half, he's developed a very good business. I've been there. I have seen his business. It is very well run. It's clean. It's organized. And he has run it, made a very thriving business out of, out of that particular corner. What the uh, committee is. Uh, recommending here is to revoke Mr. Sohal's cigarette license, not only his cigarette license, but his alcohol license, even though there has never been an allegation of any improper uh, sale of any alcoholic beverages. The only allegations that, we, that are before the committee and have been discussed are three separate violations of selling to underage people um, in regard to cigarettes. Uh, cigarette sales. Um, I think that what I had said to the committee is that 
Mr. Sohal has gotten the message loud and clear. He has put measures in place now to make sure that this is not going to happen ever again. I think taking the uh, license away, just revoking his license, is going to shut this business down and create a particular blight on this, on this corner. He cannot survive without the cigarette sales. Rightfully or wrongfully, he is, is able to sell the cigarettes and that is how he has made his business. Uh, and if you take that, that par portion of his business away, he is not going to be able to survive. The drastic measure that's asked for is just to simply revoke his license, which I don't, I don't think that that's the proper measure. I think what Mr. Sohal should be given is another chance. And I had proposed to the committee that there would be a short-term suspension of his license, say 10 days, with also the proviso that Mr. Sohal would sign an agreement that if this occurred ever again, uh, that he would immediately give up his license. He has a child, he has a, uh, a wife, he's, uh, like I say, he's been in this business for a year and a half. Prior to coming here to Sheboygan, he had been uh, in California where he operated a sex successful business for seven years in the same type of uh, business and had no violations, no problems ever before. I think what we have seen in, in, the, in the recent past is that Mr. Solhall has simply gotten sloppy but that's not going to happen ever again. He has, uh, as I said, he has put measures in place that this is not going to happen. He has a, a manager that is on duty for about 10 hours a day. Mr. Sohal is on the premises for about eight to 10 hours. And he also has a person working in the morning that, is, uh, that has never had a problem. So what I'm asking that the committee or the uh, council do is not ratify the committee's finding uh, that the revocation should take place. I believe that the community would be well served giving Mr. Sohal a stern message with a, a suspension. Even a suspension is going to hit Mr. Sohal deeply in the pocketbooks. He's going to have a hard time with just a suspension. <coughs> Rather than taking his license away, the suspension would certainly serve as a, a hammer uh, on Mr. Sohal's business and certainly serve as a, as a very uh, strong message that this is not going to be tolerated. Uh, as I said, taking away his license will cause a, a, a situation in that, on that particular corner where the business is, is it's going, it's probably going to be fold, folded up. I think Mr. Sohal would also like to briefly address the council. Sir. Sir, my name is Santok Soho and I respect everybody like senior and counselor, whatever in the committee and senior, whatever seen like uh, people live here right now, Shwagan, and listen to me. <coughs> I mistake this one and how can I do a mistake? I don't know for that one, but I respect everyone. I love Shwagan. I came from California because I come here like Shabagan people, nice, everybody nice here. So I don't know, like, uh, how can I do mistake? And I do mistake, I ask matey, everybody, like, everybody, you know. I want, please give me one chance. And if they, you get me, you, whatever you want do to me, you know, you put me in jail or they send that. I agree with you, and I respect to every senior. Anybody come over there to my gas station? I love my friends. I never treat like, you know, people come over there like, uh, he's not customer, I like, like treat my friends. But you are on the side, you know. I don't know say anything. Everybody stay here right now. I have my daughter. I have other, my baby come very soon. So I don't know where I go. So you decide. Okay. Thank you, sir. You. Oliver and Bonnie. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, our committee came across the situation and we're resolved to the fact that, I mean, even in the statements that were made tonight, um, 
This individual singled out underage individuals, sold them cigarettes for amounts in ex excess on purpose. He was caught in a sting and when you commit actions, there needs to be accountability associated with that. Our community was very resolved that this is not acceptable behavior in our community. Um, it occurred twice, then three times. He came to our committee after the second time, said that it would never happen again, that whatever was necessary needs to be done, he would do. Um, this is strictly a predatory practice, and I find it unacceptable in our community. Um, he claims that his, his attorney says he was sloppy. Mr. Sohal says he made mistakes. Um, predatory practice and singling out children to sell them um, products which are restricted from their, from their possession is not sloppy or, mis or mistake. That's simply wrong, and he needs to be held accountable for that, and that is why our committee came to the conclusion that his uh, license should be served in revocation. Thank you, Alderman Bene. Alderman Vanderlo. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I voted against this in committee, and I'm going to tell you why. I believe that Mr. Sohal should be punished and lose his cigarette and alcohol license. If you possess morals and common sense, you feel that people who sell cigarettes to minors should be punished to the point where they can no longer sell to minors. Simply revoking his license will not do this. All revoking his license will do is create a shell game that we cannot control. We have been led to believe that Mr. Sohal's uncle will start the procedure which would make him the owner of the gas station that is located within walking distance of a high school and a middle school. It is obvious to me that Mr. Sohal will be selling cigarettes under the ownership of his uncle. If we revoke the license with terms that would terminate Mr. Sohal's license when he sells it, we can put in a stipulation indicating that Mr. Sohal cannot be part of the new business. I feel that it is the best interest of the city to make sure that Mr. Sohal can no longer be part of a business that is in walking distance from a high school and a middle school. Minors should not be sold addictive substances, period. The only way we can guarantee that Mr. Sohal cannot sell tobacco from this location is to apply, apply these stipulations. I wish to amend the motion to revoke to include to suspend the license for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, the license may be transferred to a new corporate entity, which the former agent of Singh Petroleum, Santo Sohal, has no connection either as an agent director, shareholder, or employee. The new entity to which the license would be transferred must agree that Sohal could have no connection to the business in any way for one full calendar year. The transfer of the suspended license would be dependent on that agreement. Failure to enter into a written agreement reflecting these terms or failure to abide by the agreement would result in the license automatically being revoked with no further notice or near need for a hearing. We have a motion in a second before it's under amendment, under discussion. Alderman Bonet. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, so, Attorney McLean, um, with the stipulation there, is there, if they turn around and sell the business again, let's say in a month after that, can they circumvent the stipulation? Uh, <clears throat> Alderman Bonet, I haven't seen the stipulation, so I, uh, I, I don't know. I can't address that. I know uh, Assistant City Attorney Adams, uh, I believe, has seen the language, and perhaps he can address that if, if that's okay. Please, would you? There actually isn't a stipulation drafted, but any stipulation would include that language, that it would, it would apply to not only the corporation to which it would be, uh, to, to which the license would be granted at the end of the suspension period, but to all of its successors and assigns, basically to prevent Mr. Sohal from having anything to do with the business for that entire one year. Um, this is dependent on, on uh, the, you know, the corporation entering into this agreement, um, but there's also built into it, if they do not enter into that agreement, it, re it reverts back to just simply being a straight revocation. Uh, with that, it, it, can we stipulate period forever in the stipulations? I do not agree, for instance, I do not agree with the amendment for the fact that it's for one year. You probably can. Um, the reason I used a calendar year is to reflect what is generally done with a revocation, because with a revocation at the end of the 
the license year, you can apply. It doesn't have to be granted in, in any case. But you probably could change that language to in perpetuity. Alderman Stefan. Uh, yeah, I've got a few questions. Um, I guess for the assistant city attorney yet, sure. I understand the logic behind the motion. I'm just questioning, can we actually do the part about the employee also? That would, and yes, but the, what has to happen is the corporation has to agree to it, which is why we can do it. Basically, what we're saying is we're providing an ability for a successor corporation to take over there, a successor corporation you know, of Mr. Sohal's choosing, but in order for that to happen, you have to agree to our terms. Okay. Um, the other questions I have is, as drafted, if we voted for the revocation, is that just until the next license period and then it's up for renewal? It could be approved, it could be denied again? Uh, it would not be up for renewal. It would be a new new application. Uh, there would would be no application to renew, but uh, or license to renew, but uh, uh, an individual could apply I mean, for a new license would or at the next license year. That's true. The revocation I mean, really just says he's definitely not going to have a license till June or July. During the license period, right. which is a year. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess the, the issue that Alderman Bonet said that probably concerns me the most that I've heard, but it really isn't addressed here, and I want to make sure I'm clear on it from either Mr. Soho or his attorney. Does he admit that he sold cigarettes at a far higher cost than to minors than he would have to regular people? No, no, he ad admits to the fact that uh, a person came in to his business, this is the second incident we're talking about, and gave him a $5 bill and got the cigarettes and ran out the door basically. Didn't, didn't want the change. That's what I've been told of Mr. Sohal, and that's what he would tell the committee or the he council. Didn't, uh, keep it in, you know, uh, and I don't know what purpose for that because he will come with this. That's why he turned out. I said, hey, listen to me. That's your chain. You know, he said, keep a chain. First time hiring, uh, hearing here, and I tell all committee, you know, I tell her, I tell him, sorry. I say, okay, that's your chain. He said, no, I don't want change. Keep a chain. And please write down me like I charge premium charge. Okay, my last question was I just wanted to be clear. All of these events, first, second, and third, there were communications with Mr. Sohal in between them, right? I mean, it wasn't like he found out on August 20th about all three of them. There were definitely, I know you said between after the second one, he went through the committee. So there was, after each one, you had some communication with him at least, right? Thank you. Okay, second time. I want to say something. If they, I charge premium cigarette to everybody, why I not charge it second time, you know? Okay, sir. I tell to committee, if they like second time, he come with the same like underage, you know, I check her ID, everything. Two girls come in my store, I check her ID, that time she's fine, you know? Then, if they, I charge premium price, everybody like underage, why I not charge like second time? I tell to committee. Why I not charge like second time? First time he say, okay, keep a change. Then please under, uh, like, uh, write down on the paper, press report, everything, right? I charge premium price. If the I charge premium price, why not charge a second time? I tell the committee. If they, you know, like, I'm, I'm like a honest person. I'm not do like that. But whatever committee say, I'm fine, you know? I'm Indian. It's okay, but I'm not like my, I, I have my daughter too. I not sell uh, somebody sell to my daughter. I tell you everybody, okay, you are stay here. You like my daughter too. If there's somebody sell, I do same thing too, whatever you do. And I'm not that person, uh, you know, I, I ask him like, you know, his parents come with him too and he buy a cigarette from him, <coughs> same guy. Second time he come over there and I sell cigarette and he pleased with you because he don't want to pay fine to his son, you know? And then he, he will come with the police and he took, took five dollars on the counter and tell him, hey, keep a change, hey, take a change. He said, keep a change. And police write down over there, I charge premium cigarette. City clerk over there too, everybody know. I'm not saying like, you know, 
And second time you are revoked, if they are the same thing like that, then I, why I not charge premium cigarette second time? If they I want to make money, I do second time too. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I understand the, the I, I believe the intent behind Alderman Van Der Wheelie's amendment. I think he made it clear to the committee when we met. Uh, I believe his comment was, I don't want this man selling cigarettes to anyone anymore, or along those lines. You need a license, the establishment needs a license to sell cigarettes, the individual does not. That means, to me, he can go to any other place and work and sell cigarettes. The message is not necessarily being sent, in my mind, from the committee to the individual selling cigarettes to minors for a profit, but to the establishment, any establishment that hires somebody and doesn't train and doesn't follow the law. I can understand and I'm sympathetic about giving an individual a second chance. There were three instances that we considered and others that we couldn't. We don't have today, tonight, the benefit of the officer that testified before the committee. If you heard him, you would be convinced too. There was just too much there. I feel for the gentleman. I would love to give him a second chance. This is three times. This is three times. All I'm saying is my vote will be consistent and it's based on principle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I did want to state that if the amendment would pass, I would agree to what Alderman Bonet had said or had uh, asked earlier with the longer than a year. And I also did want to touch on what Alderman Perez had said that this is a complicated issue. It's hard to understand if you weren't there because the t testifies from the officers that we heard made the committee come to their decision. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Oh, thank you, Honor. Are right, you changing your amendment to in per, uh, forever? To, to in perpetuity? I'm sorry? I would agree to that. Okay. I mean, you, you'll have to change your amendment to get a second to that. I mean, that's. Motion change amendment to include forever instead of a year. I would need clarification to, to agree to that. Are you talking for Mr. Sohal selling cigarettes? Yeah, in that? As an employee. As an employee of that store? Employee Working slash that owner. Store? Employee slash owner. I mean, can we do it? If we can do that, okay, fine. Second. Okay. I just wanted to clear. I, I was going to clarify some questions that were posed through the conversation. I don't. Uh, she didn't get a second to that amendment. I, I, change. Yeah, she did. I think Mike Warner did. Oh, okay. Um, since we don't have the police officer here, I do have the police report that was offered as evidence in the instance of the quasi-judicial hearing. Uh, this was Officer Winters working in a sting operation after juveniles had reported that cigarettes were being purchased there at uh, not only juveniles, but they, they were at an inflated rate. The juvenile reported to the officer that it occurred six times prior. Um, this juvenile had been caught with the cigarettes and that's what led to the investigation. Um, Officer Winters did do an investigation where the money was marked, serial numbers were checked, and after the money had changed hands, the officers came in and um, cited, I'm sorry? Five oh, five singles. Five single one dollar bills. And all five one single dollar bills were at the, in the cash register of um, Mr. Sohal. He was the person who had sold the, the cigarettes. Um, as you see before, I, I'm kind of confused by the, his attorney saying that he didn't admit because it says in our documents he admitted to the stipulated truth of each of these allegations. And I mean, these are just actions. I, I believe full heartedly that this is somebody that we do not and should not have in our community selling cigarettes or alcohol to minors. Um, now, if you want to expand upon that, uh, Attorney uh, Chuck Adams would expand on the fact of why we incorporated the alcohol license with that and the, uh, the um, justification of the state statutes with that. And, and I do want to note that for the purposes of this 
um, document that, that I'm appearing not as counsel for the council itself, but I'm, I'm acting as the prosecutor of this action, and Attorney Volkner is here as well, acting as counsel for uh, the Common Council just on this one issue. Um, the, uh, the committee had asked um, some time ago for me to uh, do a little bit of research on whether um, uh, we could uh, revoke or suspend the alcohol license as well as the tobacco license. Um, and my opinion was that yes, you can. Um, the uh, law provides that when you uh, suspend or revoke a license, it has to be um, for behavior that's related to uh, the licensed activity. But that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be exactly the licensed activity. And there are a series of cases, uh, many of them out of the Milwaukee area, especially out of the city of Milwaukee, that deal with situations where uh, licenses uh, are revoked or suspended for behaviors that reflect on the licensed activity but are not, but are not exactly the same as the sale of, for example, beer to minors. Um, and uh, I do believe that it is appropriate for um, a, an alcohol license to be suspended or revoked when the alleged behavior is the sale of tobacco to minors because the, um, the type of activity that's being engaged in, the sale of tobacco to minors, is very similar to other behavior that we want to make sure that we prevent, which is the sale of alcohol to minors. Uh, while it's not been proven that uh, Mr. Sohal ever sold alcohol to minors, the behavior he engaged in is very similar to that type of behavior, and the, and the case law does suggest that uh, you can suspend or revoke, uh, revoke the uh, alcohol license because of this type of behavior. Hang on, Chuck. Sir, you the hearing's Focus done with now, but hang on, Chuck. You have a question for? No, I do not. I was just going to make a final statement on that. Okay because then someone else wants to speak yet. So go ahead, go ahead. Follow me, Bonnet. Oh, thank you. I thought you were directing No, go ahead, this. make your final statement. Okay, I was just gonna point out that I do support the amendment um, to, uh, to the motion. I feel that it's imperative that we prevent this person from selling cigarettes at this location. The amendment will do that. And I feel this is a person who repetitiously abused the trust of the people and um, incorporating the alcohol license, it, both are controlled substances. He abused our trust with one substance. And is, I agree with Attorney Chuck Adams on the connection. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I understand it correctly, what we're asking is to revoke the alcohol license, revoke the tobacco license, make a stipulation that the new owner, if there is a new owner, can never hire this man, ever. Is that what we're saying? I don't believe so, but Chuck, you want to answer that? Excuse me, Attorney Adams. Close, it's, it's my understanding that what, what the motion is, is to suspend the license for 30 days. At the end of the 30 days, the license could be transferred to a new corporation in which Mr. Sohal would have no interest either as a shareholder, as a director, uh, or even as an employee, and that um, that new corporation then could start up business after 30 days, uh, but they would also have to enter into an agreement that at no time would Mr. Sohal ever become an employee or a shareholder or a director uh, in, in that corporation or any of its successors. What it would mean for Mr. Sohal is that he would have to get employment somewhere else, by somebody else. Yes? No? Maybe? That's the way it sounds. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Mayor. That's, that's exactly the way it sounds. Yes. That means he can go to work somewhere else, sell cigarettes, because he doesn't need a license to sell cigarettes. I, I guess I am a little bit concerned with uh, with a shift in, uh, in feelings and decision in the, in the committee. But as I said, uh, I will be consistent on my vote. Okay, Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I guess I'll support the amendment. You know, even if we do this, Mr. Sohal can still go somewhere else and and work. He just can't work in this particular store. And the importance of that is that this particular store is 
just down the block from North High School and Urban, Urban uh, Middle School. And I think that that is one of the reasons that we look at, at this. We had an individual who, three times for sure, sold cigarettes to minors. Uh, the press article said he had upcharged them on that. That was the thing that, one of the things that bothered me beyond some of the others. We hear that they may or may not have done it on purpose. Uh, I, think, I think it's reasonable to allow that business to move over. It's already an established business and uh, keep Mr. Sohal away from that particular store. Uh, we can't stop him from going somewhere else. Uh, and unfortunately, he put himself in this situation. I think it's a reasonable amendment, and I'll support it. All right. Has this council had enough discussion, even with? That's illegal. OK. Uh, Alderman Rainflesh? Sure, just one more comment. Thank you. Um, hearing the debate regarding the amendment, um, initial reaction would be to uh, not support it because we're not really enforcing long term. Um, because, like I said, we can't can go work somewhere else. Uh, but I realized upon revocation, the viability of his business is, is lost without being able to sell um, tobacco or uh, alcoholic beverages. He would not be able to sell that. I think we're, that's a double punishment to him, not only taking his current business away, but not giving him something that he can then sell have some money for his kids and find some, uh, while he finds some other employment. Uh, so I will support the amendment that it will allow him then to at least get some kind of equity out of this business to find something else. Thank you. To another discussion, Sue, would you call the roll, please? Okay, we've got a couple amendments here, though yes. we've got to go backwards here. Okay. The first is an amendment to the amendment, and we'll be voting on that first. That was changing the one full calendar year to forever. That's the first amendment that we'll be voting on. Everybody understands that? So if you vote yes, you're voting for forever versus 30 days. Oh, hang on. So that, that's part of the whole amendment. I mean, no, no action had been taken, so you're not amending anything. Uh, just they do they that did that well. on the floor. Okay. Yeah, do you need to hear the you know, whole amendment Would you like read? the full amendment read before you vote on it? Okay. The no. amendment is to amend the recommendation of the committee so as to conditionally suspend the duo license for 30 days. At the end of the 30 days, the license may be transferred to a new corporate entity to which the former agent of Singh Petroleum, Sangto Sohal, has no connection either as agent, director, shareholder, or employee. The new entity to which the license would be transferred must agree that Sohal could have no connection to the business in any way forever. The transfer of the suspended license would be dependent on that agreement. Failure to enter into a written agreement reflecting these terms or failure to abide by the agreement would result in the license automatically being revoked with no further notice or need of, for a hearing. This recommendation would replace the current recommendation to simply revoke the license. Okay. Okay. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. No. <clears throat> Peterson, Aye. Rinflesh, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, no. Berg, no. Bonet. Aye. Twelve eyes, three noes. Motion carried. I think and we now need to take action on, on the. Uh, <clears throat> DRC as amended. Okay, Aye. this is the RC as amended. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? No. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carried. Okay, thank you for coming in. 1445 to be referred. 1446 by finance, recommending amending the capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission and the Plan Commission for the program period 2005 to 2009 and adopting the 2005 program for implementation and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Groff. Your Honor. Your Honor, I would move that the um, RC be accepted and adopted and that we um, place a report of officer on file and amend the resolution to borrow 
for the TIF projects and the fire station in 2005, and therefore pass the attached substitute resolution. Second. Moved and second, accept and adopt, report to committee, and pass the substitute resolution as amended. Under discussion. Alderman Werner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, everyone knows we need a, a new police station in town. Everyone knows we need a new south side <coughs> fire station. Uh, we've been working through the budget all year in building use. The recommendation was that both of these facilities be built in 2006, and, and that's something I voted for in the plan commission. I voted against, including the $3 million in borrowing for 2005, and I will vote that way again. Thank you. Alderman Stephan? Uh, yes, I, I guess I would ask that we have uh, Chief Zyre address this issue. There's been a lot of communications regarding this that are faulty, have bad language. Um, he related to me that a lot of the aldermen didn't know the, the facts because there's been such a campaign out there to misinform people. So I'd ask if we could have the uh, chief sure. just bring us up to date on the financing and the facts of what this is going to bring to the city of okay. Chief. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, council people. Uh, this project has been in, in the making for many, many years. Uh, when the south side expanded, uh, it's uh, annex by through annexation, many, many homeowners and buildings are, were built to the far south side. Presently, uh, there are three stations north of Penn Avenue and only one south of Penn Avenue on the entire south side. Other chiefs before me have brought this issue to the council and to capital improvements for consideration. Uh, we again, our staff brought those, con those considerations to the capital improvements committee and they've rated it and rated it very high that it, there are needs out there for infrastructure for another fire station. Uh, presently, the south side fire station houses six firefighters and the north side fire stations house 17. Uh, there, is, there is a need in, in the far south side to put a building up, a one-time cost to the city of $700,000, which will be borrowed uh, this year, and then there was also a concern about uh, the savings of $20,000. I've talked to uh, Finance Director Gephardt, and because the planning of this would take place, uh, starting to build it in uh, May of next year, it would not be completed until June of 2006 that the borrowing for this would not be done on a major scale. It's a small a scale borrowing, and you can uh, ask the, the Director uh, of Finance on this. It'd probably be looking at the Wisconsin investment uh, company on that through the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the rates are low, that it would be done that way and there would be no additional cost for the year 2005 uh, on the borrowing. <clears throat> the concerns came up about we're going to ask for a lot of people and we're going to buy a new truck. From the day one, those of you who were in the committees that our, com our staff came to and explained it, it was said that we'll do it with present firefighters and we'll do it with present equipment. The plan is to try and have that station out on 18th Street and Marbury to be staffed with hopefully three most of the time and at least two at times to give the people on the far south side a chance to be rescued either from a fire, a defibrillated by a, a, a firefighter unit getting there within four minutes or any type of emergency medical call as the rest of the city enjoys on the north side and in the medium south side. Another thing that comes to play is firefighter safety. Part of our job and part of the statutes that say and, and, the, and the Department of Commerce and National Fire Protection Standards say we all always look at the citizens first. We also look at firefighter safety. Presently when those five firefighters on the north south side of the station, which is normally only five there because of the staffing situation in the city, head south to a fire, they wait until the north side station here on, on um, uh, New York Avenue or the far 25th Street, get all the way across town to help those five firefighters when it takes 14 firefighters to extinguish or rescue, put a fire out. They will have those resources available quicker. There'll be a conversion of firefighters going to a scene on the south side as we now have presently on the north side. Um, also, when there is a unit out of the south side, then now there'll be another unit available. So what we need is a garage and a living quarters to house that piece of equipment and to house the firefighters. So the commitment was, the only firefighters that would be used are present firefighters and present equipment. Um, if there's anything else. Um, uh, the, we, we, we do have the architecture um, bids in, and they, uh, we have two bids, uh, uh, $20,000 or below the $72,000 um, 
uh, that was budgeted, and there are one, ones at 49,000 and ones at 51,000. I was just going to state, uh, I don't want to speak for the committee. It was three to two in the committee, and I believe the two that voted against it, their concern was getting that interest money, the cost this year to 20,000, 25,000. The chief has explained that, you know, the, not only will the borrowing not cost any money, but we also, the uh, architecture plans came in less. So we do have funding in the budget without moving any money. I just think it's important that we don't tie this up with the police station. It's, you know, it's a fire station. We're not building a $10 million fire station. We're building one unit to serve the fastest growing area of the town. It shouldn't be judged by what anybody else has or the egos or what's popular, the politics. It should be the city capital improvements group, which is, consists of aldermen and citizens rated this high. They said, this is what we should do. We have the funding to do it. If we wait a year, it's just gonna cost more money. The school board is advertising their referendum. They wanna do it now because the costs are going up. Same thing here. Costs in building are not gonna go down. Construction companies have personnel costs. They have benefit costs just like we do. The cost is we can afford it today. We should do it today. There's no sense in putting it off and charging the citizens another fifty to $60,000, which is what it would be. And I ask you to just treat the fire station on its merits and not try to mix it in with anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Wright Flush. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with, in terms of merits. Uh, the south side is the fastest growing area in town. I think the only way that we can really um, keep the budget crunch from impacting our current residents is to expand, to have more residences, have more homes, have more businesses in town to spread that cost uh, throughout. Um, but uh, as Alderman Stefan has said, um, you know, it, if we can afford, we can do it. I'm just not sure we can afford to do it right now. Uh, we've been here in the police station for 40 some years saying next year, next year, uh, it's time for them to do it. I will wholeheartedly support the building of the, the police station when we can afford to do so. I just can't do it this year, especially when, it, well, I will support it after the first ground shovel of dirt is turned over to the police station, I'll put it that way. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. As I said, uh, we clearly need a new south side fire station. Everyone understands that. I understand this. The cl plan commission understands that. Building use understands that. The plan commission recommended not borrowing the $3 million in capital improvements for 2005. They recommended it would be to eliminate that for that year, and I supported that. Uh, as chairman of public protection and safety and as chairman of the building use committee, I'm well aware of the needs of the fire department and of the Sheboygan Police Department as well. The city needs a new police station as well as a south side fire station as I've said twice already. And I know that I, that I myself will work to, sh to see that both of these come to fruition. They're both needed. And part of the executive budget recommendation for 2005 included using $500,000 from the capital projects fund to maintain the current staffing levels in the police patrol division. That was money that was supposed to go towards the new police station. We're not trying to tie the police to the fire and delay the fire because of the police or any of that. That isn't, that isn't how I look at it. That's not how I make my decisions. That is part of the funding for the new police station and it was used to maintain the staffing levels in the police department. And it came out of the funding for that new, new building. I mean, even with this, they're still down three patrol officers and I think four or more administrative staff. The fire department is down. They still need people. Public works is down. They still need people. We're making all kinds of trade-offs. We need that south side fire station. I agree. But I just can't change my mind on that $3 million in borrowing. And, and I, you know, position I've taken. And, you know, when I take that into consideration, I can't support the finance committee's recommended changes, and, but I do support building both of these in 2006. So. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Stephanie. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to agree. I, I do think we need both a police station and a fire station, and I, I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. This money, you know, as, and we can have Rich Gebhardt talk, we're not, since it's such a minuscule amount of money in the overall picture, he's not even going to go out there. He's just going to borrow it from the state. Where is he? We're not going to borrow it like we normally would have when we borrow $3 million. That's why the costs aren't there for the interest. This money has nothing to do with the $500,000 that's set aside for the police station that might be used in the budget. It's got nothing to do with this fire station. You know, we don't want to 
you know, get that impression out there that we're taking from the police to build to the fire. This should stand alone. It's got nothing to do with the police station. The money isn't being borrowed from the police department budget. And it isn't being used to cut police officers. It's being borrowed to build a fire station and it's not coming from the police department budget or the police department building budget. Correct. Thank you. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Capital Improvements Commission ranked this as one of the top priorities in the city. I stand behind their judgment. Uh, this is no longer a financial question as was posed before. I think that's been clarified by both Rich's summation and what we've heard on the floor here from fellow Alderman. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, um, the Finance Committee, as Alderman Stephen pointed, I'll go to three to two um, for this, and I can't speak for Alderman Montemayor, but um, she was the other opposing vote to this, and it was basically because we were looking for um, where the additional funds were going to come, because when you requested that the $3 million be cut out of the budget for, for um, capital improvements, you were saving $100,000 in, in interest costs. Correct. Um, because it was estimated that the interest cost on the borrowing for the fire station would be approximately $20,000. By the amount that they save now on their architectural fees and so forth, they have made up that $20,000 plus. So um, we're still saving the $100,000, although we're still doing the, the borrowing. We're just getting $20,000 of it from another place. So um, I will support this this evening. Chief, do you have anything else to say before we go? Okay. If there's nothing else, would you call the roll, please? Correct. Aye. I'm sorry, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Correct. Just, okay. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. No. Rinflesh. No. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Warner. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. and Serta. No. Uh, the vote is nine to six. Motion carried. Okay, moving on. <coughs> Thanks for coming up, guys. 1447. By public protection and safety, recommending passing ordinance relating to parking restrictions during snow emergencies and passing attached substitute ordinance. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and filed and that the substitute ordinance be passed. Second. Moved and second that the ordinance be accepted and placed on no. BRC. A <clears throat> Accept and adopt. Accept and adopt. Report of committee and or, substitute of general ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this is a substitute ordinance that is essentially the same as the ordinance 1448, which Alderman Bauman brought in. The reason we, we had to do this is because the last three little dots in that document essentially deleted what was left after that in the paragraph. So we had to add those words back in for the rest of it. And uh, that's basically all it did. So what Alderman Bauman brought forth is the same. So. There's no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Manny. Oh, excuse me. Alderman Van Akron. Yeah, I'd like to uh, order to uh, explain this a little more to me about this uh, being called by the Public Works. Am I correct? Yes, it came to Public Protection and Safety and Assistant City Attorney, Attorney Chuck Adams was there. And he said we just had to add this part back into it. It was a dual referral to public works and public protection and safety, and we both agree with the change. We just had to add the rest of the language. Is that what you're looking for, Don? No, I, I, what I'm looking for is how this is going to work. Is when a snow emergency is called, they're going to announce, and then we have to move the cars to that side. Alvin Baldwin's the expert. Alvin Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'd be happy to explain this. <laughs> Great, so why don't we just take 1448 with it because this is typically the same thing, but that's all right. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Now I am. Now you are. Okay, I'll start over. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd be happy to explain this. Um, 
I actually was yelled at by a couple of people up in the clerk's office even because they didn't understand how this thing was uh, written. And it came out of committee with the KISS concept, keep it simple, silly. <laughs> and the thing being, if a snow emergency is called during the day, which 99% of the time is going to happen, let's say 10 o'clock in the morning, and today being the 18th of the month, and it was called at 10 o'clock this morning, you're going to be parked already on the even side. You're going to stay on that even side until that snow emergency is finished. If in the event you're coming home from work on this same date, you're not going to park for tomorrow because that snow emergency is still in effect. And once that snow emergency is over, then you probably won't be ticketed that evening because of the fact that this emergency usually does run through the entire evening. The following day you would again be parking the way you should be unless there's another snow emergency called. So it, it's uh, now changing it from the yearly thing that we had had, odd year, odd park, even year, even park. It's just going with the daily parking so that we can still keep our roads and streets cleaned as best as possible during the winter. Alderman Van Akron. In other words, if we're on the even side and uh, it's called on the odd side of the day, what do we do then? Go back to the other side? Again, if it's an odd day and it's called during the day, which 99% of the time is going to happen, you're going to stay on the odd side. Yeah, but you don't part. What if you're on the even side for the day and you call a small emergency at 10 o'clock and they're working in their shop and you call a snow emergency and they're all going to have to go out and move their cars? If it's a snow emergency route, you're not going to be parked on the streets in the first place because of the snow emergency. But otherwise... What do you mean? I can, I can be parked at my house on the side. What about if you got no parking on one side? If you got no parking on one side, it isn't going to matter. You're going to stay parked there. You stay on one side? Great. Until the snow is moved, and then you move your vehicle over, just as it has been in the past. I think we're confusing the people. I don't think so. I think so. Alderman Montmayer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Apparently Alderman, the way the slates up, lights are coming up, everybody's confused, <laughs> but go ahead. Alderman Baumann, through all of these years, I've kept it straight, I've kept it straight, yeah. but may have just slipped away now. But I'm sure you're doing it to make it simple. I just had to say that, that I've always understood it, just barely, always understood it, and always met the criteria. They have never gotten a ticket for the parking with the snow, overtime occasionally. But it may just have slipped away now. Thank you. <laughs> Changing is a, during a snow emergency, when it's declared now, it's declared as part of the winter season, the year. And for instance, the winter season this year, because it begins by ordinance November 1st, will be 2004 to 2005. What happens is with this, it, it conflicts with the overnight winter parking rules when we call emergency, especially when we get after the first of the year and we're into February and we say it's a snow emergency, therefore, Park, park cars, no parking on snow emergencies, dead end or cul-de-sacs. Parking on all other streets is on, on, on the even side because that's the winter season, 2004, 2005. But actually, it's 2005. So everyone's thinking, well, it's 2005. I should really be parking on the odd side. But nope, the winter season started in 2004. That's where the confusion comes in. And it was conflicting with overnight parking. When people park during the winter season, when there's no snow emergencies year round during the, during the winter season, excuse me, it's overnight parking from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. and you park on that side of the street. So what we decided to do is just for snow emergency declarations, when, we're, when they're declared, is that the parking on the side of the street is allowed on the day of the snow emergency that is declared, instead of going back to the winter season and, and thinking what year did it start. Basically, as, as Alderman Bauman stated, if we declared an emergency today, today is an even day. That's the first side of the street you would park on, on the streets that you're allowed to park on for during snow emergency. We plow that side of the street, the opposite side. You have one hour to move your car, and then we plow the other side in those neighborhood streets. All other parts of the snow emergency ordinance are, are not affected. They're remaining the same. It's just the...
designation of which side of the street you're allowed to park on will now coincide with the actual day of the emergency versus the winter season. So. Sounds simple enough, but we'll refer all the calls to you. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Solomon Van Akron. <laughs> One more question. Uh, we had a lot of them call at night at 8, 10 o'clock. So we're on one side, you plow the other side. We had one hour to get across to the other side. We're, what, we, what we've been doing, and if, if you've noticed, is with the winter parking, um, alternate site parking, we've really reduced the number of snow emergencies that we've had to call because we're able to go into these neighborhoods and, and do a good cleanup plowing during the evening hours without having the disruption of calling a snow emergency and having everyone get off of all the snow emergency routes, dead ends and cul-de-sacs. What we anticipate is if we had a large snow event, let's say that started late afternoon, what we would do is try to call a snow emergency to start to begin, let's say at midnight, knowing full well that people will probably be going home in the evening ready to start to park for tomorrow so we can get into those neighborhoods. It would coincide with their normal practices of parking on that, on that side of the street. <laughs> Hang on, David. You may have more questions here. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't have any questions for you. <laughs> um, I voted against this the first time. Um, I will be voting against this again. I can remember last time our Honorable Val Schultz. Uh, alderman for the Common Council here was trying to argue for this last time and he couldn't get it straight for the life of him when he was arguing for it. Many constituents, I'm bracing myself already, uh, don't use the word or don't think this is simple and certainly don't use the word silly when it comes to the phone calls I get from them. And it's usually about two o'clock in the morning I get a plethora of phone calls in the first two sets of snowstorms we get. So I will be voting again against this. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, do you still call the snow emergencies or does Public Works? They call them, then they call me and tell me they call them. <laughs> okay. Well, whoever's calling them will say, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, will say that the snow emergency is scheduled to start on, uh, at correct. 2 o'clock or 2 a.m. on October 18th, let's say, or, or October 19th or whatever it may be, and therefore that will give you a clue as to what side of the street to park on also, correct? Correct. We always try and give them about four hour leeway, correct David? Four to five hour leeway before we announce. <coughs> or start plowing, excuse me, we announce it mm -hmm. before we start plowing. Okay. okay. Do you know the questions? Would you call the roll please? Manny. No. <laughs> Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? No. <laughs> Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? No. Serta? Aye. And Graf? Aye. Eleven eyes, four noes. Motion carries. 1448. By Public Works recommending passing the ordinance relating to the emergency powers parking restrictions during a snow emergency. Alderman Bauman. Well, Your Honor, seeing the last one passed, I move to accept and file this report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second before us to file the report of committee under discussion. <clears throat> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. <laughs> Rinflesh? <laughs> Sigali? Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? No. Van Akron. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? That's a clarification. We're just voting pilot. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 1449 through 52 to be referred. Okay. 12-4, we will hold. If you remember in the beginning, we um, held the notice for the ordinance, so we will hold this also. 1337, resolution by Groff, Stefan, Berg, Manny, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. 
Thank you, Your Honor. That along with 1338, which is a, a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget also, I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Okay. Moved and seconded at 1337 and 1338 be put upon their passage under discussion. <clears throat> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. One? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1346, RC, by the Special Committee on Risk Management, recommending filing documents submitting a Communication mm -hmm. from Renee Schuscher regarding room tax money. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, on 1346, I would move that that RC uh, be accepted and placed on file. And then on 1314, which is also by Special Committee on Risk Management, I would move that, um, that uh, a notice of injury on behalf of Sandy Genske for alleged damages is relevant as a result of flooding with the property she owns at 1743 Fox Hill Road, that that notice of injury be placed on file. And then uh, on 1311, which is a, um, a, re a request to pay um, for alleged damages for a sewer backup in, in um, a person's basement, I would move that we pay the plumbing bill in the amount of $206.25 and deny the remainder of the claim and have the city attorney send a notice of disallowance for the curling as this meets how we normally handle this type of claim. We have a motion and a second before us on 1346, 1314, and 1311. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Peterson. Aye. Ringflesh? Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Perez. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1345, General Lawrence by Alderman Warner, Van Deweel, and Serta creating a section in the code so it has to regulate the parking of large vehicles within the city. Alderman Warner. Th thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved in second ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this ordinance uh, will limit the parking of large vehicles, namely semis, on residential streets. Uh, it follows all the other statutes throughout the state code, and uh, the Public Protection and Safety Committee recommends its passage. Alderman Waldman. Thank you, Your Honor. Under exceptions, letter E, where it states that the vehicle, a recreation vehicle, whether designed to be towed or move under its own power provided that said recreational is parked or stored in compliance with all other applicable statutes and ordinances. Parked or stored, stored, does that mean it is 24 hour exempt? The parked or stored means it has to comply with all of our other applicable statutes and ordinances, which means no, it would not be 24 hour exempt, anything. Just so that as an example then, uh, if someone parked his RV then, in front of his own home or in front of someone else's home for more than 24 hours, it could be ticketed and towed. Pretty much is the same with your own private vehicle, except that uh, that would take a complaint and most often that's not gonna happen. I think Chuck is still here. He can explain that probably in a little more detail, but we, that is in effect right now. Okay. So. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I think it's important to mention that this um, issue was brought to the attention of public protection and safety due to my district, and that is the issues being addressed. I believe it's between um, 17th and 18th on Indiana Avenue, so the, the truck drivers there need to pay attention to this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to ask you that because I got a call today again. Okay. From 17th to 23rd Street, they seem to pile up along yep. there and park and let their trucks run for a lengthy period of time. Right. Yes. So. Glad you're addressing that. Okay, if there's another discussion, would you call the roll, please? Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 
1453, a resolution by Alderman Warner authorizing entering into contract for the incident respond vehicle and waiving the competitive bidding process. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Honor. Honor, I need to ask for suspension of the rules. Second. Is there any objections to the suspension? Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none, proceed. Under that, Your Honor, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion to second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, as you know, Chief Zyer and the department have been working to get this done for months. This is in regard to the uh, Federal Homeland Security Grant funds that the city has received. The entire project is funded with those Homeland Security Grant, grant money and a private donation by CEO Tony Jovanovich of Community Bank. There's no city dollars involved in this. The request is, is to allow for the down payment to be made this week and keep the project moving forward. Again, no city tax money involved. Private donation from Community Bank and Homeland Security grants covering all the costs. Okay, if there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Sigali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Evan Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. There's one more document. One more document, hang on. Steve? 1455, or 54, excuse me, is an RO by the city clerk submitting communication received by the mayor from Penny Weber regarding her concerns over the possible budget cuts relating to the police department, particularly to the community policing unit. And that will go to public protection and safety. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? 